What's good everybody, I'm Keandre, this is Hoopin' Elect, and welcome back to the channel and part two of this preseason preview slash big board. Now in this one, we will be talking about uh, those we didn't get to inside that top 60. And at this point of the year, a lot of those guys who are ranked in that like 40, 50, 60 range are, are pretty much in that same general tier uh, entering the year. Not saying that like the order doesn't matter completely because it does, especially uh, more towards the top. But at a certain point, it starts to just become a pick and choose game in a lot of ways. And for that reason, a lot of the players that we actually talk about in this one will be drafted uh, and some even in the first round. So we always got to talk about as many as possible. So we'll talk about some of those most notable guys first and then we'll get into freshmen, sophomores, um, upperclassmen and internationals that we haven't touched on just yet. But before we get into that, there was an issue with the Hugo Gonzalez portion of last video. So here is that now. Hugo Gonzalez hasn't gotten much of an opportunity this season for Real Madrid as they play in the EuroLeague and ACB, which is the second best competition in the world. It doesn't look like that's going to change unless he somehow goes on loan somewhere. And that makes him an interesting evaluation based on mostly good priors in whatever garbage time minutes he does get this year. His slashing, defensive impact, and shot making flashes are all pluses for a young wing. It's just the three ball that's really going to have to come along and then a level of control offensively that would have come with reps but again he's still well in this potential lottery range and NBA teams will get a better perspective on who he is as a worker and in practices than I'll likely be able to. My thought on that sometimes things get a little bit mixed up but yeah now that we're done with that we can go ahead and get into some of those that we wanted to cover that we didn't get to in that first video so starting with Cedric Coward from uh, Washington State now he was at Eastern Washington uh, previously and then Juco before that but he's a 6'6 wing who uh, I think has a lot of the attributes that you're looking for from a complimentary player he's got a great motor he makes plays defensively he's a good athlete he can shoot the three uh, really just a, a talented off ball player in general and by all accounts a hard worker entering the year I'm in on him as a two-way guy and I think that um, if he can continue his ascent uh, up another level I honestly wouldn't rule out a top 40 selection and a, a guaranteed deal so he's definitely one to watch and I think that that possibility uh, could be in the cards Tyon Grant Foster is a name that we talked about a lot last year he's such a good scorer and, and athlete on the wing at about six seven that he has to be still included even being as old as he is now with him a lot of it is the health concerns and and the heart issue that he had still kind of in the background but there's also some questions just about uh how projectable his his game is to the nba level in terms of being a, a compliment and not like the the focus of an offense or just like his scoring being his his primary attribute but you know i think he's just gonna be good enough that teams are still gonna be interested as long as the health checks out we saw him almost single-handedly beat alabama final four team and a team that looks like they'll make another final four uh, run this year so how he's shown he can be a good defender when he's locked in he's definitely one that i, I think could be in the mix now moving on we've got kobe johnson out of ucla now made that uh crosstown switch that you i don't know how many people how many people have played for ucl ucla and usc i haven't looked that up i need to but kobe johnson had a really weird junior season i thought he was going to be a guy who could make a first round push last year Did, had a couple injuries didn't quite get his footing offensively the shot wasn't or didn't make the strides that i thought they would but at the same time, you know, he still produced. I think he's that good of a wing defender. He's that good of a playmaker on both ends of the floor. Well-rounded game, strong, physical. I think that he has uh, the tools and the pieces to be uh, a role player and a guy that could be back in those first round conversations at least. Tucker DeFreeze we talked about uh, last year several times. We might even talk about him the year before that, but he followed his dad. Um, out to West Virginia after spending the last few years at Drake and, and being one of the most decorated Missouri Valley Conference players ever really but he's a 6'6 wing who can shoot it makes heady plays across the court it's really just about how much he can prove as a defender and athlete against big 12 competition that'll determine his stock and if he can do that handedly in in, in a significant way I think that he's possibly a shoe in to to get drafted or at least get into a situation that makes sense for him jaron stevenson is um another guy who i think will make a lot of noise on this alabama team now there are a lot of guys over there but you know the success that he had as a freshman on that final four team and his combination of shooting potential rim protection and a solid movement base to work with make him a real guy Sion james out of 
Tulane and now um, making his way over to this talented Duke squad is somebody that I think has the type of game as a physical off guard who can defend, really cut and pass and also turn himself into a, a serviceable shooter is someone that could interest a lot of teams. Now, again, there are a lot of mouths to feed, but I think that he's he's the perfect guy to to be the glue for this team. He's older, um, just does a lot of the little things well. And if all that remains on this competition level, I think that there's no way he's not uh, getting a two-way at the very least. Ryan Kalkbrenner, another guy you guys have probably heard of, uh, especially if you watch college basketball. He's been one of the, the top performers of the last several seasons. You know, he's a legit seven footer, anchor big. He had a BPM uh, near 10 each of the last three years. He's got two and a half blocks per game in that same time span. Good touch around the bucket, upside to shoot it. My thing, he's not particularly explosive and can't get pushed around at times, and we've seen that against some of those true NBA bigs over the years, but he does what he does and it should be valued. And uh, the more I think about it, he probably should have been in it, to be honest, and, and likely will be on the next one. Keeping it pushing with another returner, we've got Adu Thierro, now at Arkansas, spent his first two years at Kentucky. I really like his upside uh, defensively and his en energy. He is gonna have to make shots and be more reliable with the ball. He was 10 for 31 on threes in his 45 game, game career at UK, but he's got a projectable game if he can just confidently shoot the three in the future. Now, moving to some, some freshmen that I think are interesting, and we'll get back, uh, loop around to some more upperclassmen and returners, but Flory Bidunga uh, is one of the more interesting freshmen out there. His athleticism, his energy, his overall defensive impact really jumps off the screen. Um, my only concern with him is his size. You know, I think he's like 6'8", uh, and as a center, that's just so difficult to survive when you also don't shoot the ball or you're not like super versatile uh, in terms of the things you can do on offense. But I think he's going to win Kansas a lot of games this year. And he might even be the better option over Hunter Dickinson in several of their uh, important matchups. So that'll be fun to see. And I'm open to him being a real guy uh, in this class. So we'll see how he kind of develops and grows over the course of the year. Josan Sanon out of Arizona State is still appealing as one of the more talented scorers in the freshman class. He's going to have to show that he can do more than just that, but he could be a one and done type of talent if um, he's able to, you know, take that opportunity and, and really show what he can do is elite. Carter Knox is another freshman I think is interesting. Uh, he's a really talented offensive player with a good frame, uh, able to get shots from different spots on the floor. Uh, he might not be the most featured on this Arkansas team. Obviously, they have DJ Wagner, uh, John L. Davis, Boogie Fland, and other guys in that front court as well. But um, he's still fairly high on the list of freshmen that we didn't talk about uh, just yet. Now, Paul McNeil was an absolute bucket in high school in North Carolina and now at NC State. I think he's the X factor of both their team and could be kind of in this freshman class in general. You know, wing or two guard at about 6'6", who can really score it. Uh, has been also impressive as a rebounder and playmaker as well. I'm not 100% sure how he adjusts physically uh, and just the type of role that he, and freedom that he gets uh, early on, but he could be one of those unheralded guys who comes in not with a lot of buzz and, and actually shocks people uh, fairly early on. We talked about Zeke Mayo several times last year. Actually, I think we talked about him in this video. He had another great season at South Dakota State and now at Kansas. He'll get to show that he can hang with this level of competition, especially without that much of an offensive load that he was carrying there. Um, he's a knockdown shooter, capable playmaker. I think for him, it's just gonna be about getting downhill and making uh, as many plays as possible within his role and then also making an impact uh, consistently on the defensive end. But he's an intriguing combo guard. He can really play. I think he gets a lot of looks. This Indiana backcourt of both Miles Rice and Kanan Carlisle intrigues me a lot. We'll see who emerges most uh, between those two. It was Rice in that first exhibition against Tennessee really dismantled them in that second half. But Carlisle showed a lot of things last year at Stanford as well. So both are intriguing creators at 6'3". And for Rice specifically, you know, having lymphoma not too long ago, going through chemo and still being able to, to get out there and compete and, and perform on the level that he is, just really cool, man. Interested to see how they work through things. This year, Adam Ball, you know, we talked about him uh, as well last year as the guy out of Santa Clara, transferred from Arizona. And I really like his game as a shot making wing. I think there's a level of efficiency, consistency, and more defensive resistance that is still there for him to prove. But 
Um, he's in a draftable range entering the year, and if he builds on what he showed last year and, and shows some of those things in a more consistent way, he'll be um, a guy to watch as well. Now, my favorite mid-major guy this year is probably Miles Rubin out of Loyola. Um, dynamic athlete at the four of the five, capable of making plays all over the court defensively and playing multiple coverages in the pick and roll. He can finish above the rim. I think the way that he moves, there is a lot to explore in terms of expanding offensively down the line, but I like what he brings to the table and I'm really excited to see him uh, take on a bigger role in year two. Got a few more here that we want to touch on before we get into the broader look at um, this, this entire class, but Noah Penda is one of those guys. One of the more interesting international players, I think, um, that we didn't talk about in that first video as, you know, physical forward who can do a little of everything. I've only seen two of his games so far uh, in this season with Le Mans. Need to tap in and watch a few more, but he was really impressive in the U20s this summer. And then I think he's one that has the type of skill to, skill set that teams are looking for. I still think Garway Duall is an eventual NBA guard talent. Now, whether that is this year or even, you know, as a senior in a 27 draft, we will still have to see. But his defensive activity, his length, his movement style, and, and just his budding feel as a playmaker is intriguing. And I think in this new Seton Hall situation, he'll have a, an opportunity to show a little bit more. Now, he's going to have to be worlds more aggressive and take advantage of his opportunities offensively in a way that we just did not see from him. But if we see that confidence growing and him taking on a bigger role within an offense and showing that guy that he was in the G League elite camp, there's a pretty good chance he's going to get, get talked about as one of the better players and prospects um, in the country. Now going down to, to Florida quickly, we've got Walter Clayton who really took control of this, of this team uh, with the Gators last year over the course of the year after transferring from Iona. He's a really talented scorer, uh, had a big moment in the tournament against Colorado in that game, just going back and forth with KJ Simpson. Uh, that was one of my favorite moments of the entire tournament. But I think you look at him as, um, you know, big time shot maker, somebody who can make plays at the guard position, is also a solid defender, uh, probably more of a basic passer, and that's a hesitation for a guy who is 6'3". Uh, but I think he's going to be one of the best guards in the SEC and, and someone to watch for sure. Another one of the best guards in the country is Iowa State's Tam and Lipsy. We talked about him in the, um, the way too early board. I think that I'm just drawn to his game because he is so productive. Dog of a defender makes plays. He's going to have to prove it as a shooter. He looked better last year, but he you know, had a little bit more of a cold spell in a Big 12. Um, and he was at just 40% at the rim and a half court. That's one of his biggest issues. And if that's improved at the rim and, and he's still as productive as he was last year, it's going to have an audacious profile. Definitely one to watch. And the last guy we'll get to, I believe, on this list is DJ Wagner. Um, came in last year, consensus top 10 prospect. He was somewhere in that range for me as well and i was a little bit disappointed by what he did last year but you know what he showed in that exhibition against kansas i think was perfect and a lot of what you wanted to see out of him the shot looks smoother uh he was more confident with the ball the downhill ability was still there now it's not that he didn't have good moments at kentucky as a freshman but um the consistency uh, the ability to you know make good decisions and, and fit in within that offense wasn't always there so uh, I think you look at what he does as a combo guard who can also defend and make shots and got to keep him well in the mix. Now we'll take a look at some of the, the overall uh, groupings of these players. I guess we'll start with the freshmen. This class as a whole, I think, has a much better chance at contributing and being more of a normal class than last year. Obviously, you had guys like Reed Shepard. Rob Dillingham and you know a couple others being super productive but even guys who aren't one and done level guys are still going to make big contributions at their schools even like a Daniel Jacobson at Purdue I think his progression has been impressive You've got a guy like Hamad Musa at Dayton you know really toolsy wing has has the type of uh game i think is going to interest a lot of nba teams eventually even if it's not this year isaiah evans and darren harris are two guys who i really like as players and i think that if they were in different situations they would have great potential to be one and dones but just because they are 
on that Duke team. They're not going to get a, uh, much of an opportunity, at least it looks like from from their exhibitions, uh, just how that rotation is looking right now. Those two are long term guys, but I would be surprised if they're not uh, both in NBA conversations over these next couple years. Or, you know, maybe an injury happens or something, you never know, um, and could sneak in there as well this year. We can keep going on uh, for days talking about uh, this class, but you've got a guy like Trent Perry at UCLA. I think the bigs are are very interesting. Mustafa Tim at, uh, at UCF, we've got a couple others over there. So yeah, in general, I think that there's still some other guys who could get in this mix or eventually will. Isaiah Abraham uh, at UConn, Ahmad Noel, if they are able to, to crack the rotation at all, those guys are gonna get their, uh, have their presence felt as well. Now the sophomores, there is a lot of talent here. I think that there's a lot of guys who maybe didn't have the, the most impressive freshman season or maybe they underwhelmed in terms of expectations, but they have a lot of opportunity to continue making a name for themselves. You've got guys like Jackson Shellstad, who actually did play really well as a freshman in Oregon. I thought he was excellent, but you know, smaller guards like him and Elliot Cadeau, who should be in for, for great seasons for their teams. I was pretty high on Cadeau coming into last season. I like his skill set quite a bit. So he's someone that I'm still still watching as he continues to expand his game. And if he's shooting it and, and defending well, um, he could very well be you know, a second round pick this year. Don't want to put like a ceiling on him, but that would be like the most realistic. You've got uh, a guy like Omaha Bilyeu who is going to Wake Forest now from uh, being a freshman at Iowa State. And the way that he looked against Bama, you know, I, I was really impressed by uh, his start there. Uh, who else is on here? You got Cohen Carr, Deshaun Harris-Smith, who are really interesting kind of gadget players at the moment. But if they continue um, shooting the ball better and using their physical tools, I think they, they are definitely ones to, to watch as well. And then bigs wise, you've got a, a James Scott who I saw at Formula Zero. I think that he could be in for a good year transferring to Louisville. We've got JoJo at Houston, We've got Daimara at UCLA, at Aaron Brad Bradshaw at Ohio State, uh, Abe Dongo at Georgia Tech. Like, there's a lot of guys here that I think um, eventually will will get in that mix. So, and we didn't even mention, you know, the rest of those guards. The guards are pretty are fairly deep too. You've got everybody from Josh Hubbard to DJ Thomas at UNLV, Xavier Brown at St. Joe. So, a lot of guys on this list. Jizzle James, uh, who will be ones to watch uh, over the course of the year. Now, getting into these upperclassmen, there's obviously going to be a lot of names on here. So. Um, you know, do with that what you want. It might be a little bit difficult to follow uh, and track uh, on the screen, but you know, I had to make room for for everybody in some type of uh, capacity. I don't even know where to start. I think like the wings and forwards. I think that's where a lot of the NBA upside resides, just because you've got everyone from you know we've talked about a lot of them already, but even going into like a Rylan Griffin or a Desmond Claude, who is looking, he might play point guard this year for that USC team, but you know, more of like a, a Swiss Army knife type in the league. If he's shooting the ball, he's gonna be one to, to watch as well. You got RJ uh, Lewis at St. John's, uh, Aaron Scott, Solomon Washington, Kobe Brea, Matthew Morrell. Like all of those guys have, have been in the mix for a couple years now. Dan Skillings at, at Cincinnati. You've got Chaz Lanier at Tennessee looking to kind of make that, that big jump, not necessarily as big as Dalton Connect, but you know, really assert himself in the SEC. Guard wise, we've we talked about a couple as well, but a Kylan Boswell at Illinois, um, Roddy Gale scored, showed a lot as a scorer and uh, his improvement as a passer at Ohio State last year. You've got Chase Ross at Marquette looking to fill the gaps where, where Tyler Kolek left. And then um, I think Danny Wolf is one to really watch it at Michigan. He's gonna be playing the four a lot, which I think is interesting. Uh, next to Vlad out of FAU. I think if he's able to handle that, he's gonna really convince teams that he can play in space and uh, handle a lot in, on both ends of the floor. You got Grant Nelson who showed up big time down the stretch and was huge in their tournament run. And yeah, a couple other names on there as well. I forgot to talk about this international group. There is still a whole lot that I need to see to have a stronger opinion on a lot of these players, but from Ben Henshaw, Dame Sarb, Sergio Larea, Terry Darling back in the G League uh, with Portland, that should be interesting. And then you've got bigs like Ethan Almanza, Hanson Young, Lakeland Olbrick, Mo Faye. Overall, there's a, a pretty good group of talent here from 
those I've seen on several occasions to this point. Now again, there is still a lot that I need to watch more of and a few that aren't on here yet because I can't really speak to what they bring, but that's where we're at for the time being. That's pretty much gonna do it for this video. I didn't wanna take too long in this. Um, I just wanted to get touch on those, those main players and then uh, get into you know the, the broader look overall but yeah there everybody on that list is is worth talking about in some capacity hopefully we'll be able to do that a little more this year i want to do like a top 100 on the website so if you haven't been over there yet definitely go check that out it's going to start out as a sub stack in terms of interface but we'll probably change that up at some point but that's all i've got for this one i appreciate y'all uh for watching my sd card is about to get full here in a second so i need to get out of here be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed uh and leave a comment down below Below about some guys we talked about in this one maybe some of those that we didn't but yeah as always i'm keandre this is super intellect until next time i'm out